Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Broadway Jets YouTube channel. You'll know me from Twitter as NYJ Mike. I'm joined as always by the master of receipts, NYJ Matt. And Matt, the New York Jets have a new offensive coordinator, and his name is Nathaniel Hackett. Yeah, and I can tell you're a little hungover because you started out with lower <laughs> energy than usual, then you brought it back up. So you, we went out a little bit last night. Oof. And look, the the purpose of this video is we're going to look at Nathaniel Hackett as a hire and how that leans into Aaron Rodgers. You probably heard every take under the sun about Hackett. Is it the right hire? Is it not the right hire? We'll go quick on that piece of it. Mike, you get the notification in the morning, the Jets hire Nathaniel Hackett. What is your initial thought? I was happy with it. I tweeted out like about a couple weeks ago. I said, if there's even a 1% increase in the chance that the Jets get Aaron Rodgers by hiring Nathaniel Hackett, do it. And there's more than a 1% chance increase. In fact, I was just fumbling around on my phone uh, looking through DraftKings right before the Jets hired Hackett. I obviously didn't know when that was going to happen. And I put a hundred bucks on the Jets, or I was looking to put money on the Jets to win the Super Bowl in 2024. Uh, 2023, Jesus Christ. I am very hungover. Um, <laughs> and the odds went down, you know, increased. The, there was the the odds that the Jets would win the Super Bowl increased after they got Nathaniel Hackett. It went from plus 3,500 to plus 3,000, indicating that Vegas knows something that you think this does increase the chances the Jets get Aaron Rodgers. The Jets are currently the eighth highest odds to win the Super Bowl in 2023, which is pretty cool. Yeah. And I was not as excited at first. Um, I think it is a 50-50 hire. And you said something to me that made me revisit my original take of the reason there's there, there's not a lot of good offensive coordinators out there, right? There's a reason why every team has one and that you have to find a pool of people where we looked at 15 guys and maybe it wasn't one guy outside of like Frank Reich who wasn't a real possibility because he just got a head coaching job right. where you can sit back and be like, oh, that's the automatic guy you have to have. Now, I do think you can be a good coordinator, a great coordinator, and a bad head coach. Right. But what happened in Denver was so catastrophically bad that there is that stink that's still on Nathaniel Hackett. You can't ignore it. The The total regression of Russell Wilson, the total collapse of an offense that does have weapons around them at the running back and, all, and wide receiver position. But I, I can take a step back from that and say, well, he called plays for a top seven offense in Jacksonville. He was around Aaron Rodgers when he won two MVPs. So I'm 100% going to give this guy his shot. Let him show me that he can run the ball effectively. Use his West Coast offense, all the weapons they have, and potentially bring Aaron Rodgers to the Jets. Yeah, look, and if Rodgers doesn't come as the obvious, you know, then it becomes more of a mid, quote-unquote, mid-hire, where, you know, last year was very disturbing. The Broncos were like 21st in yards. But, you know, you bring over... Uh, and they were 32nd in points, which is gross, obviously. Um, it reminds me when the Jets hired Tony Sperano to be the offensive coordinator in 2012 after the Dolphins had, like, the 29th offense the year before. Um, and, look, the Broncos obviously traded for a Hall of Fame quarterback in Russell Wilson, and it didn't work. And and that's, you know, what have you done for me lately? That's tough. And Hackett got exposed with some weird clock management stuff, whatever. But again, you don't have to worry about that stuff when he's the offensive coordinator. You brought up the Jacksonville years. Uh, you know, there were some tweets going around where people were like, oh, he had the 21st and the 17th and the 22nd offense. But then you have to look at who's playing quarterback. It's like Kyle Orton and Jeff Toole and fucking, uh, you know, whatever, and Blake Bortles. So uh, take it with a grain of salt. It's nice to have a guy who's had experience calling plays. The Rodgers stuff and the, and the Packers stuff is – um is is just great you know obviously the back-to-back -back mvps i saw samini tweeted or he wrote an article um detailing kind of what hackett did in green bay you know because it's just weird you know if you're not calling plays as the offensive coordinator what like what do you do uh so i samini wrote about how hackett would develop the early week game plan so he would make the initial game plan and then he would also be uh one of the 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 big uh the red, red zone. zone mastermind yeah right. so which is great because jets struggled in the red zone this year 
Yeah, and you get an adult in the building. He very he really is a likable guy from what it sounds like. It, it doesn't look like he doesn't look like a likable cool guy, but it, but then there's these videos going around where he's like goofy like, as hell. Goofy guy. <laughs> and and the promise of Aaron Rodgers is at a fever pitch right now. And you've seen these trades that happen. Like I the contract thing in the June first missed me with that over my head. I'm not gonna get into the details of it. All I know is that we've seen back, you know, two times over the past five years. The number one overall pick of a quarterback one year got traded. Like Alex Smith traded in what 2018. Matt yeah. Stafford traded before the Super Bowl. Like these trades can happen, and it it makes your whole scouting, your whole, let's see, like Senior Bowl. You're not going to scout a guy who's going to go in the top 15 if you trade your 13th overall pick. So if you right. you get the entire process way ahead of time, and you just guarantee that you know what you have at quarterback. So I would love a trade. I think it made sense not only for it. the team, and you have to do a win now if you're the GM and the head coach. It's it's truly win now. It's good for your young quarterback. We're not big fans of Zach Wilson at this point, but if you if you give him a true reset, and a reset isn't hey you take three weeks off and they get thrown and lose to the Lions. It's take a year, take a year and a half, sit behind your idol, the guy that you molded your game about, and become a good quarterback one day. A literal top two to three quarterback in the history of football. One of the best athletes ever, you know. Um, and again, there's also impetus for the Packers to get a deal done. You know, if you're going to trade the guy, maybe you want to move him before the Derek Carr stuff goes down so he could set the market. Um, or maybe if you're the Packers, you want to wait till Derek Carr gets traded or or moved. But then if you're the Packers again and Derek Carr goes somewhere, there's one team off the list that might trade for for an Aaron Rodgers and then you're – you're looking at less assets coming back to you. So, and and I think the the day is February fifteenth is when uh, Carr needs to not be on the Raiders roster. So, I wouldn't be shocked if if anything, you know, if something's going to happen, it happens soon. And I need it. You know, can't I can't live like this for weeks, and then the Jets not get Rodgers. It has to just be. It has to happen. Yeah, because it feels like if they get the sign that they're kind of out of the Rodgers running. They would go after Carr quickly, whether it's a trade or free agency. If you miss out on both, then you have to turn the tide to Jimmy G. But what I don't yeah. want is if you make the run for Carr early and you get him, we're going to be really happy. But there's going to be a very p- small piece of us that are like, wait, what the fuck? What if Rodgers goes? And you see Rodgers get traded to like the Titans for like a one and a day three pick. Then it's like, what the fuck Can't do we be, just do? Cannot you... You have to if if Rogers gets traded not to the Jets and it's not a ridiculous deal, it's gonna be very, 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 very frustrating. It's like if you start dating a very cool, nice girl who you like, who's pretty, whatever, and this is Derek Carr, and then just like absolute smoke show comes along. Oh, true. Great yeah. cook, very funny, likes to watch sports, you know, interested in the things you're interested in. You're like, motherfucker. A little, little opportunity cost there, but and look, we'd be ha- we'll be happy with Carr. Carr will be our guy, but you gotta gotta go ball to the wall to get. Yeah, and you you Rogers. have to illegally tamper. Like you gotta sit with Lafleur, sure, cool side, and say, dude, like that Rogers guy. You know, you got love back there. You can get a thirteen. Would you move him? He goes, yeah. Uh, hack it off the records. Talks to Rogers. Hey, I'm going to New York. Would you come? Make the contract right. Uh, yeah, we got weapons. Let's do it. So like there has to be illegally tampering, illegal tampering done. A part that I don't get, Mike, and I, I understand why people think that, but the Hackett guaranteed money. He could have like sat on the beach and just gotten the money from the Broncos. These guys want to work. They want to coach. They want to build their brand. It doesn't surprise me at all that Nathaniel Hackett took a job of an OC where he's going to call plays in the New York market. And and people thinking, oh well. That he knew that Rogers was coming here. That's why he took the job. I think is out of base. These guys want to work for a living. They don't want to just sit and do nothing, regardless of how much money they were going to get. So I, I think Hackett might have good sense when they talked of, hey, we're getting a veteran. They probably said we're going to try to get Rogers. If we can't get Rogers Carr, then Jimmy G, three good veterans. He said, I'm going to take the job. I don't think yes. anything was guaranteed outside of the year. No, he, no, he doesn't know that the Jets are going to get Rogers. You can't. It's, it's Unless just... he illegally tampered really well. Yeah, or if he, you know, knew from talking to LaFleur in the past that, hey, at a certain point, we want to, like, this is when we kind of want to move on from Rodgers and use Jordan Love or, or you know, whatever direction they were going to go in. So, 
because that's only a year removed. You know, these guys are having, I'm sure, very intimate conversations. Your your head coach and your offensive coordinator. And speaking of Lafleur's, uh, Mike Lafleur to the Rams with uh, Mr. McVay. Interesting. Yeah, I wish him nothing but the best. A lot of Jets Twitter yeah. kind of shitting on him. Who cares, right? Let him go. Let him have fun. Yeah, man. I mean, I just it was odd the the ebbs and flows of the Lafleur where at one point there was all those like all twenty two videos where it'd be like oh. LeFleur is just scheming people open down the field. And then and then Zach Wilson plays like shit. And then LeFleur also has, you know, it is 2022 in the NFL. You got to have a touchdown in three games, no matter who's playing quarterback. Um, Mike White's moving the ball. Some guys are not, you know, quarterback gets hurt. It was very strange tenure. I thought LeFleur had a lot of promise. The Jets threw for over 4,000 yards this year, which you kind of wouldn't expect with these quarterbacks. So. You know, I, I, I was outspoken. I said I would have liked to keep LaFleur, but again, I don't think having Mike LaFleur would really help the Jets get Rodgers, and that's all I'm focused on right now. Yeah, I don't think he would have went from one LaFleur to the other and felt totally comfortable, right? So right. I think uh, I think the hack it higher, I'll give it a B-minus current state. Um, if they I'll... get Rodgers, it's an A++++. plus 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 plus. Exactly, exactly. And, and look, you got to let the guy call plays. You got to let him try to go out there and... You got to go a far enough sample size where if you remember for five weeks to start the year last year, we wanted to fire LaFleur, Ulbricht's going to get a head coaching job. Then it flipped. Then it flipped 30 different times. So let's let it play out. If you did make it this far, though, hit subscribe. Hit it. Hit like. Do something crazy. We're making a good run here. We're trying to get to 250 by next week and keep that train going. So like any other thoughts on Hackett or the fact that the Jets are going to get Aaron Rodgers? The Jets, it's going to, it really, I feel it in my bones. I do. You know, it's just one of those things. Like, it makes too much sense. It's a, it's a sign that the Jets are a well run organization where they have not been all the time in the past. It's, you know, Hall of Fame quarterback is available for a trade. You go and bring in his offensive coordinator when he won two MVPs. Normal, normal things that make sense, logical. Get the fucking guy. All right. And if you made it this far, we have a good video coming out tomorrow regarding a what-if scenario in Judd's history. So be on the lookout for that. And Mike, have a great day.